for the work energy activity. I received a lot of emails from students who were getting confused on how to do this, so I just thought I would go over it here so that we can all be on the same page. So in this activity, basically there's going to be a spring and a cart that is launched because of the spring. And when the cart's launched, it turns into kinetic energy because it has a velocity and is moving forward. So to show you what that looks like, um, here's our video here. We have Einstein on a car, we have a spring. So if I push play, you see that they pull the spring tight and then when they cut the string, the car moves. Okay, so we see that elastic potential energy is getting converted into, elastic potential energy is providing the work by the force in the spring, which causes the cart to move. Um, so that's how we're going to analyze these. So a few features I wanna show you on the video itself. So you can look at the video in its entire event. So you can see the whole thing with the spring being pulled and the cart released. Um, but this is not the best one for measuring. So if you want to measure just the spring release, it's still the same video. It's still 602 grams. It's still spring stretch one. And we load that. You'll notice that it focuses just on the spring. So we can measure the spring. Okay, so this ruler is for the cart motion. So I'm going to exit out of that. I want the spring ruler. So this ruler is calibrated to measure the spring stretch. So um, I'm going to start it at zero. I'm going to push play. All right, so that's where the car is pulled tight. So it looks like the spring has been stretched around like 6.5 centimeters. So that's what we're going to use for like our distance there. And then, um, you know, if we push play, eventually the spring will get released. So that's how we can measure the stretch um, for the release, when we load the release video, it's still the same, 602 grams and spring stretch one. Um, you're not going to use this ruler because it says this ruler calibrated to measure spring stretch. So we're not going to use that because we want to measure the distance that Einstein moves. So this would be to calculate the velocity that Einstein has moved. So we would play the video. Um, and we would want to start the video right when he starts to move. So it's kind of, it goes frame by frame so we can get really accurate um, data on this. So I might pick there and I'm gonna set my timer to zero and we're gonna hit play and measure the time it takes for Einstein to move to 30 centimeters and I get, you know, roughly about 0.7875 seconds. So I can use that information to calculate the velocity. So when you're doing part one, it's just asking you, it's walking you through how to measure the string stretch and whatnot, and it has questions on how to do that, and then it asks you to calculate the velocity. So I'm just going to skip over that part because you'll do that yourself. So lock answers and continue. And this is where we get into the nuts and bolts of the lab. So before we move on, I'm going to show you um, a screen here. Um, it kind of cut off some of my words. That's okay. So let's talk about what is happening in the system. So before this cut, we have Einstein on his car here and it's being pulled tight by a spring. So the elastic spring energy provides the force to move the car. So this is the total energy that is being supplied by the spring. And we know this from the equation in the reference table, which is one half kx squared, where x is the stretched spring, k is the spring constant. Now, the potential energy in the spring allows work to be done, so it provides the force. So we can say that the work applied is equal to the potential energy in the spring. So when I'm calculating the work that's being done, I need to use, oops, I don't know why I did that. I need to use the PES equals one half KX squared. That's what I need to use um, for my work supplied. Once the string is cut, that work that's applied is getting converted into kinetic energy and causes the cart to move. So we're seeing the transfer of elastic potential energy is applying the work or the force, right, to move the car. So the work equals the elastic potential energy. And then once that work is applied, that work is getting transferred into kinetic energy. So that's what um, 
this looks like for our situation. So if I go back to the pivot, um, it says your goal is to find the relationship between the amount of work that was required to stretch the spring and the resulting velocity. So we're going to select a car mass in the data table below, make a column for spring stretch. Um, starting with stretch one, record the distance the spring is stretched before launch. Make a calculated column to calculate the amount of work that was required to stretch the spring that distance. Use a spring constant of 26 newtons per meter. This is really important. This here, where it says to use a spring constant of 26 newtons per meter, is going to become helpful when we calculate that work. Okay. Then you're going to make measurements of displacement and time for the cart's motion after the spring is unstretched, and then you're going to calculate the velocity. So what do I mean? So here we go. Here's my um, video. Here's my data table, and it's already nicely set up for us, which is really nice. Um, so your spring stretch is going to be how much the spring is stretched before the car is released. The work done is going to be the same thing as the elastic spring energy. So we can actually create a formula that can calculate that for us. So if you remember, our formula is one half, which I'm going to write 0.5, times our spring constant, which it said was 26 up above, times our stretch spring squared. Okay, so that is simply the potential energy in elastic uh, spring, and that's what provides the work in this equation or in this scenario. So that we're going to use that for our work column. And then when we get to velocity, we are going to simply do um, the change in the x distance, which is the distance divided by the change in the time, and then that's going to give us our velocity right there. So if I were to do one of these with you, um, I'm going to pick 602 grams, spring stretch one. I'm going to look at the spring stretch first because we want to know how much the spring is stretched. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. Uh, <laughs> Looks like the spring is stretched at 6.5 centimeters. So I'm going to put 6.5 centimeters and that provided the work done. Okay, so it automatically generated the work done. Um, there is, oh, I guess we put it in centimeters, so technically this wouldn't be in joules because we'd want it in meters. You can convert this to meters if you want. I'm just going to leave it at is for right now. Um, and then we're going to go to the release event. So I no longer need this measuring device. I need this one. So right before it's released, I'm going to set that there and I'm going to slowly push play until he's released, which looks like right about there. So I'm going to put my timer set it equal to zero because I'm only interested in the time it takes for it to move across the horizontal. So I'm going to push play. The car is moving and it moves all the way to 30. I might go back just a little bit. That looks about right. So the seconds were 0.8 and the distance was 30 centimeters and that provided me with a velocity of 37.5. And then you'll notice here it did the spring stretch versus the velocity. Um, and eventually you're going to want to change this to work because question two says what is the relationship between the initial work done on the cart and the velocity? So at some point you're going to need to change this to work and velocity so you can see that. And then you will need to linearize the data so really pay attention to um, which curve best matches your data. And then if you plot v squared versus work so you'll need to make another column for that next question where you do column, uh, add a column to the right, and what you're going to call this is velocity squared. So that means my units would be centimeters squared. Um, and what you'll do is you'll just do velocity squared for that. So that's for when you get to um, number four, you'll do that. And then you're going to put work on the x-axis and velocity squared on the y. And then you're going to look and see what the units are for the slope and does it equal 1 over the mass. So we said the mass of the cart was 602. You might get 1 over the slope to be 602, but you might also get it to be something else. So just pay attention to that. 
Um, I'm not going to tell you if it should be that or not because it's a surprise. Um, number five, can you determine the general relationship between the work done and the spring? So for number five, it's asking for you to say like an energy equation. So you want this to be to be like an equation in the reference table where you use variables. So not numbers. So for like number two, when it asks you what's the relationship, you'll want to write an equation using like y equals ax plus b. But for number five, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to write work, sorry, work equals and then variables. You're going to put variables in that equation. So add variables like you would in the reference table. So it could be like k, m, v, um, or, you know, any type of variables like that, you want to type what the relationship is. If any of those are squared, you'll need to square that or anything like that. So that's what I'm looking for in number five. And then for checking for the spring constant, for this one, um, to find spring constant, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have one column that's mass. Then you're going to need to convert that mass into force, force due to gravity. And then you're going to add a column to the right and call that the, um, uh, the x, the display, the elongation, I guess, of the spring. So how much the spring stretches. So that would be in centimeters, mass is in kilograms, force is going to be in newtons. Um, so it says here that use trial one in the video below. The mass of each disc is 10 grams. So for our first one, it's going to be 10 grams. Um, but we need to convert that into kilograms. So that would be 100 divided by 1,000. So this would really be 0 0.1 kilograms. To get force, you want to do mass times gravity, right? Because gravity is the pulling on it. So that's that formula we learned in the last unit where we convert mass into force. And then the elongation of the spring. So we'll have to push play here. So yeah, so you would need to put the, is this the spring one? Oh, I see. So you're just measuring the elongation of the spring. So we would need to go back to when the spring was at zero before the mass was there. So it looks like it's like that. And then when we push play, it looks like it got stretched to about one, two, three and a half centimeters. So 3.5. And then when we make our graph, we want to put elongation of the spring on the x and then force on the y and then the slope of that line should be the spring constant which should be close to 26 because that's what it said earlier assuming this is the same spring okay so i hope that helps answers your questions for this um i don't think there's anything else of course you can always email me and i'm not going to start grading these until tuesday which is March 23rd. So you have until then to make any corrections that you need for this. All right, that's all.